Good evening. Tonight I want to discuss my definition of self-injury based upon 15 years of studying, researching, and working with those that self-harm. I also want to go over a couple of the more common myths of self-harm. First, my definition of self-injury, self-harm, non-suicidal self-injury, whichever word you wish to use, is that it's the intentional infliction of harm uh, or intentional infliction of injury on one's body, usually for emotional reasons. Now, some things that self-injury is not is that it's not just a teen girl thing. One, teenage boys also injure, but so do women, men, and kids. And the trend has been, unfortunately, that self-injury is starting in elementary school. And I know from my caseload, I've had at least 25% that started to self-injure in some form or fashion before the age of 12. Now, another thing is that self-injury is not a suicide attempt. Oftentimes, my experience has been is that while those that harm have suicidal thoughts, it's actually the self-injury that prevents them from doing an actual attempt. And that if they did not injure, as a way to cope with their emotions, then they would actually go through a suicide attempt. And that is based on the reports of working with well over 300 people that have some history of self-harm. Another myth is that uh, self-injury, it's just an accident, or that may be one of the excuses that someone gives. And in my book, I go through some reasons why that doesn't pan out when you look at the evidence. That the injuries from a self-inflicted wound are different than, say, someone falling into a bush or accidentally getting scratched by an animal. Now, if someone has intentionally tried to harm themselves by using an animal uh, to claw them, that they provoked it in some way, then, yeah, it gets a little trickier to differentiate between accident versus intentional harm. Another thing that comes up is that it's, well, people accuse them of attention-seeking. And while some people do self-injure because they want to show off the cuts or the scars and they are trying to get some kind of response, the majority of people that cut, burn, scratch, hit themselves, they do it in private. It's secret. It, or it's secretive. That it's oftentimes shameful to them, that they don't want people to know. So when people are going about showing their injuries and really just flaunting them, it, it's not to say that they're not self-injuring, but there are other issues that are present that need to be addressed. And another thing that may come up is that people don't, well, they may not injure to actually feel the physical pain of it that one of the most common reasons that people will injure is that the emotional pain is so bad. It builds up so much that the physical pain is just frankly easier to deal with. And finally, uh, what I do discuss in my book is that the self-injury that I work with, that I focus on, and especially that the book addresses, is not the stereotypic type of self-injury. It's not the repetitive, it's not the uh, compulsive slapping and hitting, things that would be associated with more of an organic uh, brain disease, something that may be related to Tourette's, uh, autism, or what was formerly called mental retardation, but by the new DSM standards is now called intellectual disability disorder. And so while those are forms of injury, it's not the type that's being addressed in the book, A Caregiver's Guide to Self-Injury, uh, as that is intentional. Those that I'm speaking about in the book and in my seminars are those that knowingly, willingly do this act. And the methods describing there are geared for that type of self-harm. So I hope that this has been helpful, and you can... Email me with questions at Lori, L-O-R-I, at Lori Van, L-O-R-I-V-A-N-N dot com. And you can also go on my website at www.LoriVanCounseling.com. 
and you can go to the shop page to find the book, A Caregiver's Guide to Self-Injury, and other CDs and DVDs on various topics. Thank you.